I'm Brendan Donnelly, the Director of the Federal Trust, and today I'm going to be discussing the future of the City of London with Graham Bishop, who is a, a member of the Council of the Federal Trust and uh, an experienced and authoritative um, commentator and analyst on financial affairs. Uh, Graham, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we've, recent, we've recently had a, a COVID-adjusted um, Mansion House speech from the Chancellor, uh, obviously uh, about financial services primarily. Uh, what were the important points that you draw drew from from that speech? Yes, it was a pity it had to be so uh, low key. But anyway, there, there it is, and the magnificence there uh, of the Mansion House and bags of hyperbole to go with it. And I think that's probably the significance is that the the speech took place at all, and <clears throat> it, it recognised fully, or the Chancellor recognised fully that equivalence with the EU had not happened, uh, it sounds as like it was the EU's fault. Um, Equivalent for financial services. Yes, yes, yeah, I'm talking only about financial services. Um, but he then went on to say, okay, we now have the freedom to be different and we intend to use it fully. Um, so in other words, this, the, uh, the beginning of a divergence, I, when I did one of these for you before in February, we talked about a wedge being driven in between UK and EU financial services. This is now a policy which is going to be used fully. Um, financial services are very important to the economy of the United Kingdom, and I think the Chancellor recognised that. Would you would you care to remind us of some of the, yes. uh, the figures he quoted? <laughs> they're, they're amazing numbers. 10% of economic output comes from the city, uh, 76 billion of taxes, that's 10% of taxes, uh, 78 billion trade surplus um, in financial services and allied uh, services, that's huge. And that's without that, the UK's current account deficit would be appalling. Um, and then there's 2.3 million jobs and two thirds of those are outside the city. The 2.3 million, uh, we used to talk about 2 million. So it sounds as though more work has been done and identified yet more financial services jobs. Well, if you had to put vague speculative figures uh, on where we'll be on in 10 years time, what would the figures look like? How much worse do you think? Oh, um, well, I should think that the taxes will be well down. And he's talked about cutting, taking the bank surcharge down and that sort of thing. Um, uh, the trade surplus, that's the thing I'm most worried about, will be a lot smaller because that is exporting financial services to Europe and to the US and to Singapore and so on. Um, if the city's overseas activities begin to move off to Europe, it is the trade surplus which will be most reduced. And I can see that being halved quite easily. Uh, taxes could be halved um, and with it, the percentage of economic output. So these are, these are very significant. You, you mentioned um, Singapore. Um, there's an, been an agreement which was talked about by the Chancellor in his speech with, with Singapore on financial services. How significant is that? Well, um, as I said at the beginning, there's plenty of hyperbole around. So let's actually just for a moment look at the exact details which were published by the Singaporeans rather than Monetary Authority of Singapore. The UK and Singapore will explore opportunities for greater cooperation, including enhanced information sharing, closer cooperation in international fora, and so on. So this is um, very reminiscent of the MOU with the EU, which was widely derided as being meaningless. Um, so yes, there's a commitment to talk with, uh, with Singapore. What else would you expect? Uh, whether it comes to something, whether it amounts to more trade being done in some way is another question which will be answered in the years to come. Are there agreements with any other countries on the table in addition to Singapore? Well, yes, the Chancellor talked in glowing terms about Switzerland. Um, I went through the Swiss government website and the National Bank and the financial regulator. I could find no reference to it. So I, I may have missed it. But at the moment, the Swiss don't seem to think it's nearly as significant as the British do. What, what about the phrase which was widely quoted um, on the Chancellor about the capacity of the United Kingdom outside the European Union to have more nimble and agile regulation? Yes. What does that mean? What will it well, lead to? Is it just a, a couple of, uh, of epithets that are plucked out <laughs> of the air? Well, it's very interesting. I mean, it, it's, um, it feels as though it's a contradiction. Um, we're going to have uh, ever higher standards, and certainly the EU is going to have no cause for complaint that we're reducing regulation. 
according to the Chancellor, um, we're going to be pushing for higher standards at the global level. Now, the, if the global level, uh, BIS at Basel and IOSCO and so on, if these are the um, places where this is going to take place, they are ponderous in the extreme and makes the EU's process of changing law look like lightning. So I don't see how that can be nimble and agile. Um, th these epithets, as you say, uh, they sound as though we're going to uh, be uh, have regulatory competition, which is exactly what everyone's afraid of. And already um, the European Parliament's Econ Committee produced a study showing that the risk weights being applied by the Bank of England to UK re regulated banks and the degree were lower than those applied by the ECB and the stress test by the Bank of England was not as restrictive, I think is the way they put it, as that of the ECB. So th they're already the first signs appearing that uh, the nimble and agile means lower regulation, lower capital, et cetera. And everyone will be concerned about that. And what would the implications of that be? Well, I think one of the particular ones is the is CCP central counterparties, which everyone knows to be uh, an extreme, um, extremely important in the liquidity of financial markets. And uh, <clears throat> there, we're going to, we are continuing to talk to the US about these regulations. Um, the EU is doing a stress test, which they will publish on EU um, CCPs in the middle of next year. And that's going to be the basis for them for looking at whether or not they're going to give our CCPs uh, regulation, uh, regulatory approval. Um, the implication, I think, is that we're going to pretend that we're being very tough, but in the end, it's not going to be tough enough. And the EU will say, no, it is too risky for our financial stability to have these key financial services uh, entities in the UK. Business must be moved. And that's going to be very significant. And when will a decision be taken on that? Well, at the moment, it looks like the middle of next year uh, for the EU. Um, I, uh, there's no, as yet no indication of anything for the uh, UK. Yes. Um, obviously, this, this is a protest that we're talking about, and it's a snapshot that you've provided us in the, in the, uh, um, in the light of what Sunak had to say. Um, can you sketch out for us um, a timeline over the next four or five years? What are the milestones we ought to be looking out for, uh, how things are developing? Well, um, the EU is uh, embarking uh, on a major review of much of uh, its own financial regulation. Uh, it does this every two years, looks at each directive. So by, by 2024, uh, the EU, in other words, the end of this Commission's term and the Parliament's term, the EU will have had a, a good review of what it's up to, and much of it will have been legislated, even if not in force. Um, the process of uh, consultations by the UK is still ongoing. Um, and so it's going to be next year, probably 2023, before we begin to see legislation being proposed, if legislation is required. It's one of the things which the UK has said is that to be agile in these matters, much of this is being, I'm going to say, subcontracted to the Bank of England and the FCA, whereas the EU, of course, goes through the ponderous process of, uh, of Parliament and Council agreeing on things and uh, consultations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's ponderous, but it does make sure that everyone gets their view put in. We've seen reports that JP Morgan have transferred their European hub to Paris. And indeed, I understand President Macron have opened the new office. Um, how significant is that, both in real terms and, and in symbolic terms? Well, I think the, the symbolism is big. Uh, there's no doubt about it. The fact that former investment banker Macron turned up to open the debt trading floor of the uh, one of the world's most influential banks in Paris is, um, the theatre is clear. <laughs> Uh, but the symbolism, um, the big question we don't yet know, we, we've seen some interest rate swap trading and trading in EU shares moving to the continent. Uh, what we don't know yet is whether the banks are going to actually move their trading operations lock, stock and barrel. And they may feel obliged or they may be obliged actually by the SSM and the ECB to move their euro denominated trading. Will they move their dollar trading? That's the big question. And at the moment, the JP Morgan trading floor in Paris is doing euro debt 
uh, lots of other stuff in London still, um, where that will be, well, the balance, relative balance in five years, that's the interesting point, interesting question. Any speculation on what the answer is? I think a lot of it will have moved. And uh, actually, Howard Davis, a former chairman of the FSA, made a rather, as usual, pithy comment about the, the golden age of the city is not over, but it's now receding. Um, and I think that's, that's exactly it. Yeah. It will be a death of a thousand cuts rather than the big bang effect. Or the reverse of a big bang. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's true, yes. Uh, well, thank you very much indeed for a rather sobering account. Um, we've talked about it being a process which will carry on over the coming years, and I'm sure we'll be reviewing progress or uh, the direction in which we're going uh, for the City of London um, often over the next coming years. Yes. Thanks I'm very certainly. much. I'm, I'm going to write a, a paper in, for September just sort of bring everything up to date, so uh, I look forward to talking about that in September. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brendan.